the school system and the adult system are really, really different. And we have this thing called entitlement, which means that when you're in the school system, um, they you, you're entitled to certain services like um, help with supports you need so that you can function. So that concept of entitlement um, is something that we really want families to understand because uh, if you don't realize what you're getting in the school system, then you don't know how to get prepared for that in the adult system. There's gonna come a time when the school bus stops coming and you're trying to figure out what do we do from here. Um, adult services are harder to find than children's services are. So it's important that you're taking the steps when they're children, when they're small, and thinking ahead to the day when that school bus stops, that there'll be something else there for them. Typically, students leave the school system when they're 18, um, and that's when they enter adulthood. However, if you have a disability and you still need um, to meet some of your requirements in school, uh, in Washington State, students can stay up until they're 21 years old. And so understanding that early on and talking to the uh, school district and figuring out the plan for your student is really important because there are some services that you can't access until you're 21, depending on your disability. We could go by this, and each of you can look at this. The services that you can get uh, when you're an adult, um, there are actually a lot of them, but the ones that uh, I think most families uh, really need to concentrate on first um, are services such as Social Security. And so Social Security has a program for people with disabilities. If they're not able to work um, as much or as often as somebody without a disability, then they can get SSI, and that's a cash benefit uh, to help them live. Um, and that program also helps you uh, get access to uh, Medicaid, which is a health insurance program for people, which is really, really important. Uh, they also, when they turn 18, they, they need to let um, DVR know they exist, find out what services or supports will be available for their child then, you know, through that program and learn as much as they can about those programs. DVR partners with the school districts to help students meet their employment goals. So if employment is something that um, is foreseeable in the future, which we believe almost everybody um, can contribute and earn their own wages, um, then that's something that you could request, maybe having a, a DVR counselor come to your IEP meeting or meeting with them individually to talk about the services that are available um, and starting to think about what type of goal you want to make around uh, getting a job. Another agency at the state is called DDD. Um, there's a lot of D's. Uh, Division of Developmental Disabilities. And depending on your disability, you may or may not be eligible for services from that certain agency in the state. Uh, if you are eligible, it's really important to get hooked up with them um, and be ready for when you exit the school system because depending on your circumstances and your needs, there may be services there that uh, will help uh, you as a person with a disability or your loved one uh, live um, the most independent as they possibly can in the community. Getting eligible at DDD is a really important step. No matter, you'll hear lots of things about waiting lists. And there are lots of people waiting for service who's, who already have signed up and they already have been shown to be eligible for services. Many of those services are not an entitlement, such as individual and family services, which provides respite and many other services to help care for your son or daughter at home. And supported living services are for adults to live in their own homes and then long-term employment supports for adults after they turn 21. As I said, those services are not an entitlement. They don't, you can only get them if the legislature provides funding. But Medicaid personal care, if you qualify, is an entitlement. So it's important to get signed up for DDD, um, find out if you're eligible for the Medicaid personal care, and make sure you're on waiting lists for those other services so that when the fighting we do here in Olympia actually comes to fruition and we get people off those waiting lists that you're going to be on one. Um, it's also important that you have all of these tools because there's a lot of other services that may be tied to eligibility with DDD. Uh, we have a special needs trust called the DD um, Endowment Trust, Life Opportunities it's called now, and you, as long as you are DD eligible, then you can participate in that trust program. 
even though I was a person that had all of that information and they knew kind of what the transition steps were, the runs of the ladder, so be it, um, it still was overwhelming. And it was very hard to do all of that when they turned 18. So strategically, I stuck them on the calendar so I could deal with one thing at a time. <laughs> I so said, I'm going to call this person this time. We'll take care of it this time. And I set everything out about two weeks so that I got through the list of things that you had to take care of. Um, but it was overwhelming. And everybody's journey when they turn into, even those, those are the runs of the ladder that you have to go through, it's still unique to the individual. And it should be because that's the way it is for everyone. <laughs>